You ever have one of those days where you're trying to practice or work on something and it's just not completely coming out right? Because you know, if you're working on digital stuff, your computer is messing with you um, or something's just not coming together or whatever. So today's piece is kind of that. I originally was painting, trying to do something like with the Northern Lights or something like that. And the computer started messing up and lagging and having all sorts of issues. So then I just started playing and came up with this little concept sketch thing. So anyway, not my greatest piece, but you know, it's a practice piece. It keeps me moving. So how are you going to keep moving today? How are you going to keep pushing yourself to uh, develop those skills and go to that next level? So that's kind of what this was about. This is Rebel 3. And, uh, you know, it was still fun, but it was just kind of an aggravating process because it just, like I said, the computer was lagging and everything else. And so it's almost like everything was conspiring against me. Even the video recording software that I use was doing weird things every time I'd use it. So, um, so yeah, so it almost just wasn't meant to be, but by golly, I'm getting something up on here. <laughs> so hope you enjoy it. Um, the comments below, let me know what you think and, uh, come on over to our Facebook page. Thanks so much. So here we go. Uh, this is sped up obviously. And, um, what I started doing was laying in the background for the water that I wanted to have. Cause I knew I wanted to have, uh, originally the thought was have water and have uh, kind of an ocean scene with, um, maybe some rocks in the middle or something like that. Oh, by the way, when it turns blue there, that's showing the water that's on there so I can see it better. So laying in some random shapes and, and color to let it kind of bleed together and then from there I was going to add in the sky and get it going. So what I've done here is just smearing in using the blending brush and watercolor spatter to get all these different shades and colors and stuff. And I really like the effect that it can give you. Um, this was a little too pastel at this moment, but I do go back and try and lay over it. So I wanted to cut in the horizon line. So your horizon line is always going to be, well, not always, but 99% of the time it's going to be straight. Um, so your water doesn't look like it's kind of flowing off the canvas. And then from there, I took this little brush that I made and started laying in uh, foam and water and waves. And it's really just kind of a, for lack of a better phrase, kind of it's like a, a banana laying on its side, stroking back and forth. So you're kind of making that slight little loop, but really just kind of stretched out. And the more relaxed and calm the water is, the more stretched out those are. And that kind of gives you that. But you can see that what I painted underneath gives that real good foundation for these wave-like patterns and stuff to go in there. And then again, just grabbing the color from the background and using that to lay in all the different uh, foam and everything else. And, and again, this was really, this was never meant to be a super finished piece. It's just me practicing. Uh, and, and trying to work with different techniques. And part of what I've noticed too for when you're trying to get that watery look is changing the tilt on the upper right. So you can see I changed it to about, you know, uh, seven, seven or eight o'clock from where it had been about uh, three or four o'clock on the dial there. So, so it just gets it to flow back and forth and kind of uh, gives it that natural look. So, so that's what I'm doing here and then throwing in some greens and the like. And then I, uh, just trying to get that breakup of, uh, the lighting and trying to pull in the look of the water reflecting. So then it was onto the sky. So similar concept, throwing in color, throwing in color from the base. Um, I started using the airbrush tool and the, it's almost like an aerosol can and using it to throw in here. You don't get as much, um, flow with this because it's um, the way it's designed but then I can go back over it with the blending tool and, and the like and, and really kind of shape it out and flesh it out but you can see how I'm kind of re reflecting the colors from the water up in the sky whereas usually I'll start with the sky and they're reflected in the waters but I really wanted to start with the water this time and uh, trying to get that feel for it and the look and the um, kind of the atmosphere and then checking again, checking the water. Whenever it goes that light blue, that's what that is. It's just me checking the water to see what's wet and what's not. And actually there's one spot here later on where I forgot that I had it 
on uh, what canvas, but then again, my computer screwed up and I couldn't undo what I was doing. So I just had to go back and paint over it, which was much more realistic, I guess, for real world media. So here I decided I wanted to put in some Northern lights and have them be like blues and yellows, and, uh, that kind of stuff. So, um, and then just let it start flowing upward. I, I changed the tilt towards going to the top of the canvas uh, about 12 o'clock and then just started blending it using the blending tool to really soften it out and let it get that flow of disappearing. And as I was doing so, I realized, oh yeah, there's a giant streak behind it um, that's there. And, and, but my computer was being so laggy. And, is that a real word? Anyway, it was lagging so much that I couldn't tell that that streak, that, that at the top quarter of the canvas was from the sky. It looked like it was actually coming from this layer. And for a little bit, it was confusing me. I was like, well, how did that get there? But I couldn't get it to, uh, it, I mean, it, it completely locked up. I've actually cut it out. There's about 15 minutes of where it just locked up. Now, the recording locked up. It just kept recording. It wouldn't pause. The system locked up. Um, and so I just was like, okay, I'll try and wait it out. And then I realized, oh, okay, so that's from the background. And started going in, really softening that. So see, I got it here where I wanted, and I was trying to undo something here in a second, and it's actually gonna take all of this and go away, and go back to a previous step that it had been. So I'm really gonna stop using the undo, uh, I think, so. But it'll go, it'll jump back several steps. And then, of course, putting the reflected light in on the water so it kind of all starts pulling together. And that is one of the things you need to pay attention to as you're working a painting. It's best to get your color palette kind of set on the painting and then use those colors to build the other ones around it. So that way everything stays harmonious and goes together. And what I mean by that, you can see like I took the blues from the water, made the sky. I took the yellows from the lights and made the highlights in the water. But because it was pulled from there and not just pulled from the palette, it goes with it better. So this was the rock that I wanted to do here. Now one thing um, I just wasn't paying attention. I had it paused for the bleed so that it wouldn't do the watercolor effects. I didn't realize that. I wasn't even paying attention to it because I, I was so distracted with all the other issues I was having on the computer that I just didn't notice it and was going along and painting it and getting kind of some of the textures I liked and some of the look but not realizing at the same time I was loading this up with virtual water all over it. And so it was just, if this would have been real paper and real paint, it would just be so saturated and which was a shame because I was really getting the look I wanted. And then I thought, okay, once I noticed it, it was like, Oh, I don't have that on. So, um, I click it on and let it bleed. Well, it, yeah, it really bled. You'll see that here in a second, but I wanted to throw in the highlights again, using the local color erased out, so right here I'm using the eraser tool is what I'm doing because that dries that area. And, and then I can paint the highlights back in. The highlights were grabbed from the water and from the sky. So and throwing in cracks with the ink tool and everything else and, and you know, kind of getting a, a look and feel that I liked and thought, yeah, okay, this is, this is going well. And um, had it uh, about where I wanted, but then I was like, oh, no, I want to soften these edges a little bit. So let me turn on the... Uh, check the water, which I did right there. And then I thought, okay, I'll turn on the blend for just a second. And again, this is where my computer lagged up and it wouldn't let me turn it off. Um, and it stopped and then it went back. But then when I clicked it again, trying to do just a soft one, like right here, it would not do it. And it just, that rock melted. And so, but it wouldn't let me fix it. It wouldn't let me undo it. It wouldn't let me do anything other than just save it. And I had to restart. So then I came back to this mess and I thought, okay, how am I going to fix this? Cause that looks like melted ice cream sitting on the water. And I thought, all right, you know, just figure it out. And so I thought, okay, I'll put another rock over top of it. And I was grabbing a stencil that I'd made from some bubble foam, some foam uh, bubbles. And then it gives that really good texture over it. And it was just importing an image file to a stencil. That's all that was. And so then I started laying in the shapes, but so I was so frustrated by this point that I was like, okay, it just wasn't coming together because, you know, I just was distracted with it. Um, I was irritated with it 
And But I thought, yeah, I'm just going to keep plugging away. Because again, this is practice. Everything I do, I'm learning something here. I'm learning something about how to make it better. And uh, really playing around with it. So that's what I continue doing. I also started playing around with the different, um, like the pastels and the chalk. Because I wanted to see how those worked for laying in highlights and laying in um, the secondary light and so forth. Again, I think I like Art Rage better for this. It's more responsive. And because of this, the pressure sensitivity, uh, it, I think it's over calculating. So it, it doesn't, it's like it responds to the pressure, but then it's, it's like it responds to all of it real quick instead of just subtle. So then I thought, okay, I'm just going to throw in some fog, add a little bit of uh, eeriness to it, a little bit of uh, atmosphere. And I realized too, as I was doing that, I was like, it'd be kind of cool to have something. I mean, it's, it's so plain Jane. Uh, I want to put something there. And I thought, well, what if, what if like a, this figure was sitting there, you know, just kind of like posed, ready to almost attack or kind of thing. And so then I thought, all right, I'm throwing a silhouette and take a look at it and just kind of play around with that and see what it looks like. And I kind of liked it and thought, okay, so what can I do? next to really do it. And I thought, I'm going to add some wings. I think it would just be kind of cool with this winged creatures and others. So then I grabbed that brush again and started playing it. And I really liked how this brush worked. Um, it was just working perfect for some of the effects that I wanted. Again, a learning experience, you know, um, just having it play out on here and then hitting dry and then painting it and then drying it and painting it. Uh, I learned something really great here. This whole painting was worth some of the lessons I learned from just throwing in those rough wings. Uh, then I thought, okay, I'm gonna throw in some highlights, doing the same thing. And I wasn't real sure what direction I wanted to take it, if it was going to be human, if it was going to be um, kind of a creature um, or what. So I just start playing around with it and I, I kind of overdo it here on the face because again, I'm still just trying to go with what I want. You know, is it uh, and figure it out. So eventually I get it settled to where I think it's decent and I can move on. But then I realize I'm really overworking it and I just got to, um, do something else and finish this and just, you know, walk away with the lessons learned. And like I said, again, the computer was lagging, the recording script was lagging. Um, so I just needed to restart. But then I started, uh, throwing in highlights and throwing in shadows and, and realizing, okay, this is just looking bizarre. Um, but I eventually got it kind of the hint of how I wanted it. That's another thing I'm getting used to there. The, uh, drawing the straight line using the tool for, uh, rebel. It's kind of different. I like being able to just like in other programs, I can hold control in art rage and draw a straight line, uh, in, in, uh, Photoshop, you can just, you know, uh, touch it and then go out to where you want and then click shift and tap it and it'll draw a straight line. So getting used to Rebel's straight line. Then I thought, you know, spear and everything else. And then kind of got to the point where I was like, okay, I think this is finished. Maybe throw a little extra fog in to give it a little bit more atmosphere. And then I was just like, you know, my computer's still lagging. It's still doing the stuff. I'm done. And so that's what I came up with. And like I said, just a practice piece to keep pushing through stuff. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And, you know, uh, like I said, what are you doing to push your skills as you keep going? So if you like this, leave a thumbs up, leave a, subs you know, make sure to subscribe and, uh, I'm going to post another couple pieces here soon. So thanks so much for watching.